whatever ambitious goal you have, keep it. Have the goal in front of you. Have the goal in your mind. Have the specific task and approach that how you want to tackle it. I would say if you have that mindset in your mind, a lot of things you want to achieve will be done. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Artist of Data Science. Be sure to follow the show on Instagram at The Artist of Data Science and on Twitter at Artist of Data. I'll be sharing awesome tips and wisdom on data science as well as clips from the show. Join the free open mastermind Slack channel by going to bit.ly.com forward slash Artist of Data Science, where I'll keep you updated on bi-weekly open office hours that I'll be hosting for the community. I'm your host, Harpreet Sahota. Let's ride this beat out into another awesome episode. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our guest today has set a goal for herself to break into the field of data science and has been working at it with such persistence and intensity that it has been such an inspiration to witness. She's an undergraduate mathematics major at Southern Illinois University who chose data science because of the uncomfortable and rewarding feeling you get when you solve a challenging problem. She's driven by a desire to obtain an in-depth understanding of the problem statement so that she can leverage her love for advanced statistical models to extract and uncover insights that are hidden and locked away in uninformative raw data and build data products that have practical use and applications. She's a voracious learner who is unafraid to take concepts she's learned and immediately put everything together into a project or article. She has a passion to learn by sharing knowledge and helping others, and she's done this through some amazing articles and blog posts written in such a way that her readers can understand her explanations clearly. So please, help me in welcoming our guest today, someone who is unafraid with ambiguity and loves to find meaning in data, Kuyen Tran. Kuyen, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be here today. I really, really appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me for the show. Oh, definitely. It's my pleasure. Hey, so tell me about how you got interested in data science and machine learning. What kind of drew you to the field? Um, Yeah, so I always interested in the combination between math programming and application. Um, through my course, I major in applied mathematics, but I never find anything like machine learning, how I could use the concept of mathematical equations to apply in something really useful, such as like predict the heart disease. That made me fascinated at the first time seeing machine learning. So I have went through your blog and you got some really cool, interesting articles that you've written up. Mm-hmm. Um, one in particular I was hoping you talk to us about is your struggle to dedicate time for data science. Mm-hmm. Um, and can you share some of the struggles and, and strategies that you've used to enable yourself to boost your learning rate and accomplish more? So uh, with my circumstance, um, I'm a full-time student. Uh, so I have a, I'm participating a full-time course at school. And I also have a new internship. And with my research, a couple of other projects, it's really hard for me to be able to accomplish any of them well without prioritizing my time well. So I create a system of finished three tasks per day. Before the week happens, I will see, okay, what are the deadlines? What tasks I need to finish this week? And I will prioritize the tasks for that day. I make sure it's short but important. And I also create a time when I should check the email and when I should check the phone because I want to minimize the clutter and the distraction as much as possible when I do the work. That's a very, very good and disciplined approach. I really like that approach. Um, On your same blog, uh, the same website there, you've got a really interesting post uh, where you utilize the Eisenhower decision matrix and then talk about how to maximize your productivity with Python. Uh, Can you tell us more about this project and how it's helped you? Yeah, sure. So um, talk. I want to talk about a little bit about the Eisenhower matrix. It's about the concept of maximize important tasks over the urgent but not important tasks, which is checking email, um, re- replying to emails, something that is 
urgent but not important. It's hard to do that, knowing that, but it's really hard to apply in that because um, we have like let's say 20 tax per day, it's really hard to know which tax should you prioritize, which tax is important and urgent. So I was asking myself a question, can I do this with the tools that I know, Python and math? And that's how I start with the project. I use optimization with uh, Python. Uh, with the input is uh, the important score of it tax, how the duration of it tax, and with those data, my object is to maximize the productivity, specifically the important score. And that's how I achieve the results that I got in the article, which is having the list of tags. Let's say I have 20 tags a day. It will just leave for me four or five tags that are important. That's really cool. Uh, do you do this for yourself every morning or was this kind of just a one-off project that you had made? Um, actually, um, I combine this and all the tools for me to, to do this. But what I carry out from this project is a concept of prioritizing the important tasks. Yeah, it's a really, really good uh, skill and a good trait to have because oftentimes we get so distracted by our devices. Like you mentioned, you have to yeah. feel, you feel the urge to check social media. You feel the urge to check email. Uh, so when you're when you're confronted with these urges to go on and get distracted, how do you keep yourself focused on the task? What do you tell mm -hmm. yourself? It's more about the will. We all have limited amount of uh, willpower. So I try to create the environment that I'm not distracted because I'm like any other people. Really easy to get distracted if there are any notifications on my phone. So what I do is put my phone on airplane mode and throw it somewhere. Sometimes it's really hard to find my phone. And also I tell myself that just work on this for one hour and then I finish. So because I tell myself a, a really short amount of time, that give me the really intense focus. Instead of saying, oh, I had the whole day to do this so I can just relax and do the work. So by shipping my mindset, I can work much efficiently for a shorter map time. So I like how you mentioned mindset here. So did you always have this kind of mindset or did you have to cultivate and, and train yourself to think in this type of way? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So I think the, um, the condition changed me to be to be more efficient because I'm, I'm really like, I like to achieve a lot and with a limited amount of time that we all have, I would not be able to uh, attend all those things without finding a better way to uh, uh, work more efficiently. And the strategies are from reading a lot of books about productivity and also as a lot of people how their style of working. Are you an aspiring data scientist struggling to break into the field? Well, then check out dsdj.co forward slash artists to reserve your spot for a free informational webinar on how you can break into the field. That's going to be filled with amazing tips that are specifically designed to help you land your first job. Check it out. dsdj.co forward slash artists. <laughs> So talk to me about some of these books that you've read for productivity. Can you name us a couple? Yeah, sure. Um, recently, I read a book called Deep Work of Kyle Newport. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good book about different ways that you can focus on the work in the distracted world. And other books that I come across are all child learning, the different strategies to learn the new skills quickly in a short amount of time. Very, very good books. Yeah, uh, I have both books just sitting here on my shelf. I'm, I'm happy that you've got introduced to these books so early in your career. You know, unfortunately, these are books that I didn't get introduced to and techniques that I didn't get introduced to until I was much later in my life and in my career. So mm -hmm. good for you for, for exposing yourself to these concepts and these ideas and really implementing them into your life so that you can become more productive. So that's really, really good. Uh, so, you know, you've written a lot of awesome posts on Towards Data Science. Can you talk to us behind about the inspiration uh, behind writing these uh, posts? I first start with writing because I read a lot of things and I tend to forget things. So I want to find the way that I could record whatever I write First of all, it would help me to reinforce my understanding. And second is 
Later, if I forgot, I could come back to it. That is my initial purpose of writing. When I share, I start to see a lot of positive feedback from readers. That's my new motivation. The way that I find ideas for my article is just, you know, from looking around the, the things that I often do, what I learn. And I'm sure that even the small pieces that I learn can be helpful to some others because different people are in different phases. I feel like I'm a part of the community that share and learn. Yeah, it's a good approach. When you teach something, you get to learn it twice. And then you also get that positive feedback when you contribute to the community. Um, right. Obviously, that's, that's how I came across you and, and your work. That's how you ended up on this podcast, right? Is mm -hmm. through the awesome contributions you're making. So I know there's a lot of our audience who are breaking into data science as well, and they're juggling their full coursework while trying to learn all the extra things that you need to know to be a data science. Because, you know, in school, there's not a lot of overlap between the two. Um, do you have any tips for, for note-taking um, for, for our listeners out there? I would say um, I try to capture just the more important thing in the, in the courses. Let's say I take a course it's online data science. I will just try to capture the most important thing. And I try to convert whatever I hear from the paper to um, start using it on a particular project. Um, because I know the best way to learn anything, not from taking no, but from make it yours by using it. Tell me more about how you go about um, building your ideas for your projects and for your posts. How do you how do you kind of go through that process? Projects that I have are those that I just start from, let's say, thinking, what if I could apply the things that I know to answer this question? Um, for example, um, I have a project on uh, finding the correlation between the sun and depression. That is something that I heard before, but ask myself, I am able to test with the data that inspire me to find the data and to use my uh, knowledge that I process to answer the question. I like that approach a lot because I think a lot of times when students are building projects, what they tend to do is they tend to say, oh, what data set could I find and what algorithm can I use? But instead, you're coming from a place where it's, let me work on something that I find interesting mm -hmm. and, and let me pursue a problem statement that I think is going to be fun and interesting to solve, which I think is definitely the best way to go about uh, doing personal projects. Yes, so let's talk about some of the challenges that you have to overcome while you're creating the process. Like, you know, how do you find the right data? Um, how do you organize your thoughts? How do you structure your project? Um, how do you kind of overcome these challenges? Yeah, so let's talk about the challenges that I have recently about this is structuring my data. I want to make it so that I can reproduce the code in the future. Because as you know, a lot of data science projects, many of them, you could find a similar structure. So I try to figure out the best way that I can reproduce it and also how to write it so that in the future, when I read it again, I can understand it. So those are the challenges. And how I overcome it is I ask a lot of questions and I did a lot of research. Um, I did a lot of research by reading books, uh, Google, but I also ask a lot of questions through messaging the experts who have worked on the field for a long time. What are their strategies and how can I test their species of strategy for my old project? So when you're messaging the experts, how are you getting contact with them? Are you finding them on LinkedIn? Or are you talking to people on, on your school campus? What's your approach for that? It's both. The most valuable relationship I have in right now, uh, contact I have in right now is with a person through LinkedIn. I just message him because of my curiosity to learn from his experience. And we happen to have a talk outside of uh, messages in a coffee shop and we keep a contact for like four or five months and it was really valuable for me because he worked in IBM. I learned a lot from him and also I have two best friends who are also really interested in data science. That keep me motivated. Whenever I have anything that I question about, I always find good resources, a good place for me to ask. So there, there is a lot of uh, noise on on. Google and on the internet, you know, there's so many resources everywhere. Do you have a specific 
uh, strategy for finding the right resources when you're uh, Googling? Yeah, um, actually, I really like to, so for the coding, you know, some short coding things, I would um, just Google. But let's say for analyzing the data, how to analyze this data, like what the steps, something that involving the steps um, or involving like a whole structure, I would use the book instead because I feel like the author who already wrote the book, they dedicate a lot of time on uh, fixing and um, using their best resources to put in the book. Let's say I want to shift the code. I would love to find a book on that topic. When you're first starting out with a project, um, how do you kind of develop a plan of attack? Um, do you have like certain milestones that you set for yourself that you want to hit? Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what's the process like for that? Yeah, um, sure. So first of all, I want to set for myself a uh, deadline. Uh, because you know like the project can go for months if you don't set yourself deadlines and so many things other things come up so I said I would set myself a short deadlines and uh, make and um, subtax the big tax so that I have small um, approachable tax uh, small tax that I could finish in one or two days and then I will start with understanding the data and asking the right questions because the foundations are really important. If I just go into the data without understanding what what kind what do I want to get out of the data, I would get lost and it would take more time for me in the long in the long run. So when you're understanding the data, what's your process look like? What are you doing when you're understanding data? So first of all, I will see like, okay, I will use data visualization and some data analysis abroad to see it. With data visualization, I don't make it like fancy, but I try to use like just, you know, simple visualization tools that give me straight away the things, the informal pieces of information that I need. From that, it gave me the directions for where I should process the data. Yeah, so you put, bring in your data set, you do some simple visualizations, and then mm-hmm. from whatever you see as you're slicing, dicing, mm-hmm. and visualizing the data, you let that kind of guide the rest of your process, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, that's really good. I, I know a lot of our listeners are going to benefit a lot from uh, from all the tips you've provided them. So I'm, I'm curious, uh, when you're in an interview setting, and let's say you come across a technical question that mm-hmm. you don't know how to answer right off the, off mm-hmm. the bat... Um, how would you how would you handle that? What would you do? How would you proceed in that kind of situation? I would start with, can you be more specific about that? Because when I ask that question, they would ask another kind of question. And if I still don't know about the questions, I will be honest with them that this is not something that I have come across before, but I know something similar to this, that maybe I could use this approach to solve that problem. Yeah, it's a good approach, like kind of, you know, just showcasing your thought process, walking them through how you would answer a question um, and, you know, asking for more feedback, asking for more clarification and taking it from there. Talk to me about what your job search process has been like. Um, you know, have you, we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic now, so things have been kind of uh, interesting. Have you been consistently applying for jobs? Have you been getting call backs? What's your, what's your... Uh, um yeah so i got an internship before the pandemic so i i didn't recently approach um apply for the job but um it was really hard like data science it's really hard to get an internship like i tried to find internship in data science it was really difficult i before i created for myself um schedule of applying for five internships per day, which I reached to about more than 100 applications. But I rarely, I think I got like one or two reply. They didn't turn out to become a job. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely challenging. So when you're applying for internships, are you looking for a particular industry, a particular type of role, or do you kind of just apply for roles that, um, you know, no specific industry, but it looks like it, it would be an interesting kind of role? 
Yeah, I uh, I think I apply for the industry that relevant to data science. It's it's really changed when I start to apply more because at the beginning I didn't know what I was looking for but the more I apply and the more I do more projects the more I know what kind of things that I would like to work on so right now if you ask me the kind of job that I want to apply when looking at a list of uh, the job opportunities I would have better idea of which one I would like to apply and I think that would be a better apply yeah. to something that is not really relevant is also a good strategy yeah my my general advice to, to students who are looking for internships and looking for roles I tell them to kind of pick a industry that you're trying to focus on that you find interesting and then in your extra time, whatever extra time you manage to find as a student, then what you could do is go research that industry and then learn the, the vocabulary, the terminology that they're using in that industry, and then also you know, look up case studies for that industry so that you can gain an awareness for the type of problems and challenges that a data scientist in that industry is working on. Um, that does a couple of things for you. What that will do is, you know, rather than taking a shotgun approach and applying to everything, you're really mm -hmm. focusing your, your, your energies onto one industry and you're focusing your self-directed learning path towards something that's going to end up in a a favorable kind of, let me rephrase that. You're focusing your energies in one direction rather than spraying it everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, you start becoming accustomed to the vocabulary, you start becoming accustomed to the type of problems they're working on so that when you go to interview for these roles, for these internships, you just have a greater awareness and you'll be able to convey that during the interview. One last question here before we jump into a lightning round. What's the one thing you want people to learn from your story? Whatever ambitious goal you have, give it. Have the goal in front of you. Have the goal in your mind. Have the specific tax and approach that how you're going to tackle it. I would say if you have that mindset in your mind, a lot of things you want to achieve will be done. Let's go ahead and let's jump into a lightning round. So first question here, Python or R? Python. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm um, a data scientist working on with a lot of papers and I guess a lot of implementation, which is what I really like. So what's your favorite question to ask during an interview? What attributes of a candidate are you guys looking for for this position? Another question that you could try asking towards the end of an interview mm -hmm. is try to ask the interviewer so that you end on a positive note. What do you enjoy most about working here? Ah, that's a good one. So it gives them a positive mood. Yeah, Which it does. So it's like the recency effect, right? So, you know, if, if they end the interview talking about everything they love about the company, they're going to be in a good mood and they'll attribute and associate that with you. So that's a little, a little psychology hack there for you. Okay, so what is the weirdest, strangest, or hardest question that you've been asked in an interview? It's a funny one. If you could be a cartoon character, which one would you be? Which one would you be? I say we need the poo. <laughs> we need the poo. Okay, now why is, why is that? Why we need the poo? I don't know. He just, um, I guess he just don't pay attention much about the things around him and he like really focus on his honey, which is who I am. I like aside my work, I didn't really pay attention to the things around me and sometimes the people around me just say, hey, pay attention to this. So I just think he's like me. All right, so you're, you're Kuyen the data bear. Yep. <laughs> there you go. So what's the best advice you have ever received? One minute organizing will give you back hours in the future. That's very good advice. So this next question, I usually ask my guests that, you know, if they can go back in time and mm -hmm. tell their 18-year-old self something, but I think 18 year old for you is not that long ago. So uh, let's take it back a little bit further. If you can go back in time and tell 15 year old Kuyen anything, what would it be? I would say try to learn to love whatever you are doing and you will start to do it really well because anything that you want to master, you should start with learning how to love it first so that you have the motivation to push you forward through the challenges. Very, very wise advice. That's very good. So have you read the book by Cal Newport, So Good They Can't Ignore You? It is a book that I am reading. Yes. So that's <laughs> that sounds like exactly like the premise of that book. So that's very good. Uh, very 
very good book. What is your favorite book, fiction, nonfiction, or both, that you'd recommend to our audience? And what was your biggest takeaway from it? I would say nonfiction. And uh, the book I'm in my mind right now is Outliers because I really like the, um, the concept of 10,000 hours through um, because that gave me the belief that if I want to be that type of expert, if I want to be that data scientist, I could achieve it with enough hour of dedication. What's up, artists? Be sure to join the free Open Mastermind Slack community by going to bit.ly.com forward slash artists of data science. It's a great environment for us to talk all things data science, to learn together, to grow together. And I'll also keep you updated on the open bi-weekly office hours that I'll be hosting for our community. Check out the show on Instagram at the artists of data science. Follow us on Twitter at artists of data. Look forward to seeing you all there. The work that Malcolm Gladwell references in Outliers is based, the 10,000 hour rule that he calls it, is based on work done by a psychologist from, I believe, the University of Central Florida, uh, Anders Ericsson. Um, so that book was called Peak. Yeah, so that's a, a great one that you should check out. I think you'll really enjoy it because um, yeah. it's going to be in line with a lot of the other books that we've talked about here. So what else is on your reading list? How many books, how many books do you go through in, in a month? How, you know, are you doing audible? Or are you actually reading? Yeah. So before I do more audible, but now since I stay a lot home, I read a lot. So I create like a habit of reading at least 30 minutes per day. I think I go through and I read really fast because of um, my habit of reading train me to read quickly on the things that are important in the book. I would say about four books per month. So do you have any tips for our listeners on how to read a bit faster? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say when you, because a lot of people, when they're reading a book, they would read from the, you know, every pages from the, like starting from the beginning. I would say they should read a book and having fun with it. First of all, like, you know, read like, read like, okay, does it book works my time or not? You know, just read through like the top, the end, the middle, go through different sessions that you find interesting and read through them. That will make you interesting in the book. And if doing like that doesn't not make you interested in the content of the book, I think you should just skip the book and go to the next one because there are a lot of resources of book out there. So if you waste your time on something that um, is, is good but not excellent, does not provide you a lot of pieces of knowledge i think you should skip it and go to the thing that you are interested in and that is also better in the way that if you read something that you are interested in it will be more likely to stick it's very good advice yeah there's a um uh, he's a ceo founder of angel list his name is naval ravikant and he mm-hmm. has a quote that that is pretty much uh read what you love until you love to read um And he also expounds on the philosophy that, you know, actually you don't have to read a book from cover to cover. I think a lot of times people get a book and they feel obligated to read it from first word to last word. And then somewhere in the middle, they get tired and bored of it and they stop reading altogether. But your approach is very good, right? Just, you know, you don't have to read the entire book. You can skip through and go through Mm -hmm. parts that you like and and pick Mm -hmm. up information there. So Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a terribly slow reader, so I consume a lot of my... Uh, knowledge through an auditory fashion. So I go through Audible a lot. So I read, I just read my books on, you know, 2.5x to 3x speed oh, depending on yeah. and just blast through books. So I think last year, 2019, I went through about 100 books that way. Wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's just <laughs> maybe, absorbing. Maybe later I should ask you about your reading list because I feel like you have read a lot of interesting books. Yeah, definitely. Re- I read a ton. And, um, you know, I, I make use of Audible's very generous return mm-hmm. policy. They say that if you don't like a book, you could um, return it and get your credit back. So I've oh. done that. I've done that a lot. I see. I see. So I'll, yeah, I'll read through a book, read through a book, and I'll return it, get my credit back. I guess now Audible will probably never sponsor this podcast if anybody <laughs> from Audible heard that. What song do you have on repeat right now? Um, how about the song that I sing a lot every morning? I would say Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> which is funny of how I, but I'm like, I don't know, it's really cute and 
I keep like singing it and sometimes I turn it on when I am um, studying. I, I like a lot of Disney songs while I'm uh, doing my work and studying. So where could people find you? How could they connect with you online? People could find me through my um, um, articles um, link, uh, which is medium.com slash at Queen Chan 1476 and uh, Queen Chan K H U Y E N T R A N 1476. Awesome. And do you want to shout out your uh, website as well? It is map data simplified.com and simpler. Find com. Thank you so, so much, Kuyan, for taking time out of your schedule to sit here and talk with me today. I think a lot of up and coming data scientists um, are going to learn a lot from the advice and tips that you've given them today, mm-hmm. um, as well as, you know, visiting your blog and visiting your, your medium posts and your towards data science posts. So thank you again for taking time out of schedule to be here today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me in the show.